to talk about assortment variety. And I just heard in the paper today that millennials, are you guys millennials? Yeah, OK. So millennials prefer Subway over McDonald's. Is that true? Do you? And the reason the pundits say is because you have more customization and more variety, and you can get what you want from Subway, whereas everyone knows McDonald's is operational excellence. Everything is standardized exactly what it is. So it seems at least a lot of the analysis are saying if we're trying to derive more customer value, we should be giving more assortment variety, more variety, more customization. That's what people want, more variety. Um, and so my topic is on is variety good or is too much variety too much? And the reason I ask, is too much variety too much of a good thing, is because there's this famous jam study. And I'm, I know most people have, I think of it as famous, but it's famous in the world of academia, so that's not as famous as like Seinfeld. But I do think that a lot of people have heard of it. But just for the few of who, who haven't, let me tell you again what it is. It was done by this professor who is a professor now at Columbia named Sheena Iyengar. She was a doctoral student at Stanford when she did this. And she was working with her advisor, Mark Lepper. And at, in Palo Alto, there's a store called Drager's. You may or may not know that store, but you've seen stores like it. It's a store that has lots of mustards, lots of olive oils, you know, that kind of really fancy, fancy store. And Sheena loved this store. She'd go into the store very often, but she very rarely bought anything when she went into the store. And she had the hypothesis that in this store, there was actually too much variety. And when there's too much variety, you don't buy anything. To test that hypothesis, and this is what her dissertation was, she set up two tables in the store. And on alternate days, she either had six tasting jams or 24 tasting jams. And the data that she collected for the, her dissertation was how many people came up to the table as a function of whether there were six or 24 um, jams on the table. And then when you came up to the table, you were given a coupon for a dollar, and you could purchase the jam if you wanted to. So she collected how many people purchased the jam. And what she found was that more people came to the table when there was 24 versus 6. So the variety was a good thing in attracting people to the table. However, of the people who came to the table when there were 6, 30% actually purchased jams. But on the 24 jam, only 3%. So she concluded that too much variety is a bad thing. If you have too much variety, you delay your choice. You're not as certain about choosing the right thing. And in essence, too much variety is a bad thing. This spawned a lot of research in this area. It seemed to make sense to a lot of people. I don't personally think it makes sense. Interestingly, at the same time, I did another study exactly the same time. And I did 6 versus 24. It was coincidence. I published my study a few years later. And nobody talks about the famous jelly bean study for some reason or another. <laughs> However, it was done on the exact same time. Um, and like I said, it was total coincidence. You'll see when I tell you that there are differences in the study. And I don't have time to tell you about some of the differences. But you can think through some of the differences. But what I did is I went into an elementary school. And I had a tray of six flavors of jelly beans or a tray of 24 flavors of jelly beans. And I put them on the tables in the elementary school. And I said to the kids, eat as many jelly beans as you want. This was not a problem for any of the kids. They understood this assignment. <laughs> now, the thing about it is, count, contrary to what Sheena thought, I expected and found the more flavors of jelly beans that I put out, the more people chose. And to me, this made perfect sense. You got more flavors of jelly beans, you're more likely to find the one you want. If you get bored of jelly beans, you can try something to have more variety in it. Of course, more variety is better than less variety. I, and now remember, this is exactly the opposite of what Sheena found. But I was so sure that this was the case, that this was not the purpose of my experiment. To me, this is super obvious. The purpose of my experiment was the difference between actual variety which I will define as the actual number of flavors or skews in an assortment, versus perceived variety, the amount of variety you perceive is there. And to me, the relevant variable is not actual variety, but perceived variety. And to test that, the, the jelly bean trays in the top row have the exact same jelly beans in it. They have six flavors. It's either organized or scrambled. And similarly down here. There's 24 flavors, organized or, fla or scrambled. And what I was interested in is the choices across within the rows. Um, and so what I found was, as I mentioned before, you can see the blue is what I showed you before. But in six colors, 
the students, the kids chose let fewer jelly beans if it was organized than if it was in when it was scrambled. Whereas for the 24, they chose more when it was organized and scrambled. And I would argue here, the perceived variety of this organized six is too small and people weren't attracted to it. When they scrambled it up, it seemed like more variety and people were more attracted to it. The 24, that was perceived to be a lot of variety. When they scrambled it up, it got too confusing. And so that, to me, is more the issue. I want to have perceived variety that's positive, but perceived complexity is negative. By the way, I also ran this on adults, and the pattern's exactly the same. But interestingly, they ate twice as many jelly beans. Um, <laughs> So the goal of, my, of the rest of my talk is to talk about what I think is the important thing in variety. If you have high actual variety, like Sheena did with 24 jams, or if you've ever been to a tile store or a faucet store, there's way too much variety there. The issue there is to lessen complexity. So what we should look for is how do I make that large assortment seem less complex? On the other hand, if you have a little bit of jelly, a little bit of variety, like I did with six jelly beans, and I would argue Chinese restaurants do. Chinese restaurants have four entrees, chicken, beef, fish, and tofu, and like three sauces. And somehow or another, they manage to have 24 page menus, right? Now that is, you take a little tiny bit of variety, and you increase the perceived variety. So there's two ways to do it, either lessen the complexity or increase the variety, depending upon what you're trying to accomplish. So let me look at the first one, too much choice. If you have a very big actual assortment that converge on being too complex, how can we reduce the complexity? Now, I'm going to have to go through this really quickly. Each one of these slides that I show you is a full research study, but I'm just going to show you the conclusion, so I'll just try to get the big picture idea of it. The first one is variety, if you have a very large assortment, and the attribute that you're choosing among is a non-alignable attribute. That makes the assortment more complex. So non-alignable are things like colors or flavors that you can't put in a line. An alignable attribute is something like price or size or power or something like that. When you have an alignable attribute, and that is your variable of, of decision making, it makes the assortment much easier to parse. So if you think about this in New York City, if you used to go into a donut shop, and you had to pick donuts. You had to pick different shapes, different flavors, a whole cream. It was a really hard decision. Mayor Bloomberg made it very easy for you. He put the alignable attribute of calories underneath the entire, and now it's very easy to pick donuts. Usually you have to walk out because they're way too fattening. But that is the notion of adding alignability to an attribute. It'll make the variety easier to parse. Another thing to do is to help consumers learn their preferences. One of the things that's very hard to do is if you customize. In some way, because you're familiar with all the attributes, it's not that hard to do. But if you were to customize a sofa and pick all the different attributes you want to pick for a sofa, that's very hard to do. So I did some research that showed that if you allow consumers to learn their preferences attribute by attribute, even though when they put it together, there's going to be interactions, if you allow them to do it by attributes, the complexity is much easier to pick up. And now you can do this in, in offline assortments. You go into a, a couch store or something like that, they'll have an iPad or a kiosk and allow you to sort through and learn your preferences in a simplified way. And that'll make the variety much easier to, uh, to take in. Another thing to do is to think about how you structure the category. Now, there's two ways to think about structure. There's the external structure of the assortment. And there's the internal categorization that's in your head. If I want to make this assortment easiest for you to parse, I should match the external assortment to your internal categorization. Online, that's pretty easy to do. I can let you sort it exactly the way you want so it fits the way you think about the category. If I want to make it as easy as possible, I make it match. But sometimes I don't want to make it that easy. Because if I make it too easy, you'll go right to the one you want, and you won't see the rest of the assortment. So frequently, what people will do is just make it a little bit off so that it's easy enough to take in the variety. But I've got to do a little bit of searching. And that way, I can get you to choose more variety. I'm actually working on this idea with Campbell's Soup. Because Campbell's Soup wants you to be able to, the soup aisle, according to them, is a very boring aisle to shop. And they're trying to make it a more fun aisle to shop. And, but they also want to make it so that you choose more than one flavor of soup. Variety is very big in soup. Um, 
The, other, the last one I did, and this is the most recent study I've been working on, and this really applies to online. I can show the assortment to you visually or verbally. Whenever I ask people, regardless of what it is, people always would like to see it visually rather than verbal. Visual is more perceived variety. It's more fun. People like it better, more emotional. As long as the assortment is small, visual is a good way to show it. People really are attracted to it. However, when the assortment gets really large, and I show it in visually, what people do is they glide over it. They don't parse it. They can't take all the variety in. So when you have a lot of variety, a big assortment, you've got to do something to slow them down. One way to do it is to put words on it. Another way to do is to force them through timing kinds of things to slow down and appreciate the variety. I'm doing some research with Warby Parker. And if you look at that site, you'll see that they do things to slow you down so that you, per you can perceive the variety. So this is ways for you to reduce the complexity. How can you increase variety if you only have a little bit of variety and you want to make it more exciting? Well, I've done some research on names and how color names, flavor names can increase the variety. So there's, I, when I did the research, there was two different color names I was interested in. Either unusual names, so that they were exciting because they described the color in an unusual way, like, say, Coca-Cola red, or ambiguous names, which don't give you any information at all. Like, for example, if you didn't see it, would you know what color dork is? In, uh, <laughs> so there's, and what we found, though, is whether they're unusual or ambiguous, it increases the perceived variety of the set. So you see this nowadays. Um, paints are doing it. Instead of calling it brown, they'll call it weekend in the country. Ace Hardway has taken it another step forward. They not only have interesting color names, they have personalities represent the colors. In the extreme is what Genius m and does. There is no variety in M&M's. They are all chocolate. <laughs> they all have color. Can, it, it, it tastes, every single one tastes exactly the same. However, they've increased the variety. They have whole stores of M&M's now. So they, what they do is they have all these different colors. They have sexy M&M's. They have sophisticated M&M's. They've done, and they have zero variety. This is the way to really increase perceived variety when you don't have very much going for you. Uh, another way to do it is to have categories within the assortment. They don't even have to be real categories. But the effect of mere categorization, putting different categories, increases the perceived variety of the assortment. And also packaging can. Think about water. How much variety is there in water? How could there possibly be a whole aisle of water in the supermarket? And yet there is, and there's plenty of variety, because it all comes in through packaging. So in conclusion, increase perceived variety. Make it visual. Variety is much, it's much better if it's visual. Make it fun. Make it uh, emotional. Make, add categories. All of this will increase. Um, the perceived variety of the category, attract consumers, and many times you can get them to choose more. I can increase the quantity that they choose. On the other side, if you have too much variety, well, the first thing you can do is cut SKUs. That's what Apple does. They have about 50 SKUs compared to HP that has more than 10,000. So you can reduce it. A lot of the new online sort, uh, sites are curated sites with very small assortments. That's one way to do it. But very often, you don't want to reduce variety. Walmart recently added in, uh, deleted 10,000 SKUs from their assortment. They lost store traffic. They had to bring those back in. So we don't, and also when you're online, the whole long tail uh, you know, online, that whole notion of big assortments, we don't want to reduce those assortments. That's an advantage. So if you have too much variety, rather than cutting SKUs, you can reduce the complexities by align the, aligning the attributes, helping consumers learn their preferences in the easy way, thinking about the match between the external internal structure, and being careful with visual and verbal depiction. Thank you. Thank you.